Hello, lovely people. Today, we are going to talk about homes in D&D. More specifically, we're going to talk about player homes in D&D. But what we're going to talk about, laying it out, first is why the players would ever want a home. Why would you want to give players a home? I mean, come on, you want this Lord of the Rings adventure going through and just murdering along the way, having quests, exploration, and adventure, and well, that is true. There are some reasons why you would want a home, so we'll go over those reasons first. Next, we will go over what types of homes you can give. For example, you don't want to say, hey, your home is the sewer. That's, that's probably not a good, probably not a good home overall. So we'll go over different types of homes, even some unorthodox homes. And lastly, we will be going over what to do and what to not do with player homes. Now, answering the question, why would you want a home for the players? Well, there's actually a few very good reasons. First, and the primary reason why you'd probably want a home for the players is do you like it when players just go to a town, smile, and say, everyone needs to die? Or when they meet an NPC and the NPC says, hello, fr they only get that far because a knife is through their throat. Well, homes deter murder hoboism or just murder hobos. Now, murder hobos are the peoples that go around and murder everyone with no homes. That's why they're called hobos. They're just vagrants who move from place to place. If you give the players a home, first it takes care of the hobo problem, which, okay, they're not technically murder hobos and they could just be murderers, but something happens when the players get a home. When the players have a home and a base of operations, that means that they have to care about that base. They have to care about the area around that base of operations. If the players want to keep their home, which if you are smart about it and give them it as a reward through a quest or something that's significant, not just here's money, here's a home, go take it, but it's something that they've earned and gained, then they'll want to keep it. And when those players want to keep it, something starts to change a little bit in their mentality. See. Murder hobos are fine killing everyone because there is no attachment, because there's no consequence. I mean, after all, they are extremely powerful people in the world. Even if they're level twos, yeah, they're a bit more powerful than individuals. Maybe not able to take on a city yet, but as they gain more power, less and less people are able to put them down. So that's what they focus on. It's just gaining power, levels, numbers, etc. And that's... Ugh, that's definitely not the best for D&D games. There, there are ways to play hack and slash D&D games perfectly fine, but murder hoboing is not good. If you want to check out a way to play good hack and slash games, then check the description down below. But continuing on for why you would want to have a home is that with the attachment the players have to that area, they... Um, then don't want to just kill anyone. I mean, if they kill their neighbor, they aren't, inter they aren't able to interact with their neighbor, especially if their neighbor is useful. Now, if you have useful NPCs around, then it makes it so that they get more attached to their home. If they get more attached NPCs, they won't be wandering from place to place. They won't be destroying quests. They won't be destroying the plot of the game. You will actually be able to have substance instead of number crunching monsters. Furthermore, if they are just wandering and they don't have a home, they may have a quest. Kill Galandar the Necromancer, whatever, from level 3 on to level 20. But if they have that quest, even from 3 to 10, they're, they're just vagrants that go from place to place, and they may have some associatives and some friends, but... There's no lingering attachment. There's no real connection to the story. And eventually each place just seems to be more of a, okay, we're going here, that's cool. And while they may have some friends, it doesn't get that same sense of passion and gusto towards the main quest. It's not that everyone I know and care about is going to be destroyed. My home, my home is going to be destroyed. Again, that sense of possession to motivate the players further. It's 
having a home is something that makes the players care about your story. It makes them actually want to do it and have a personal investment, especially if their home and friends are going to be destroyed. Yeah, the world, whatever, cool. But my home, my place, mine is something that the players really connect with a bit more. So now you might be thinking, all right, Wizzo, so should I just give them a two-story home house? And well, you can. These are adventurers we're talking about. The homes that you give them should be interesting, exciting, places that will actually help facilitate their jobs. You don't just want to give them a, well, you go home, you sleep, and you leave. No, no, no. The, the adventuring place where they go should be interconnected to their line of work. Now, how would you do this? Well, think. Where do your players go? The first place they frequent is a bar. Now, the module or adventure Dragon Heist gives spoilers if you haven't had this, but very early on, at I think level two or three, it gives the players a mansion. The Gargoyle's Chalice. And really, it's a bar that the players can turn in, well, an abandoned mansion, meant to be a bar, that the players can renovate and turn into a bar. This makes the players feel like they earned it from a quest that they uh, did, and that makes them feel like they earned it because they now have to deal with some internal strife in this, in this home in order to make it more viable to them and their means and once they do so once they take the time to make it into a bar or even just keep it as a giant mansion it is a locale that they are easily able to be accessed by people who have jobs for them so if there is a local lord yeah it's troll school manor it's the mansion right there on troll school alley or what my players did they they changed troll school manor into the gargoyles chalice and it was a bar. That's what they named it. And they had different people come in where they could try to interact with these people. They could try to get some information from them. Hey, you come to my bar and you frequent it. Uh, DM, do we have anyone who is in the city guard? I mean, yeah, you do. You definitely do. Well, let's ask them about the state of the city guard, and then you can get information from this area. It's a vital hub that the players should be able to keep revisiting. If you have a fortress, then you might have it so that the lords come to you in your fortress and, well, like a border fortress or fortress on the city, and keep you informed of the things going on in it. And when they do so, then it, the players are able to ask a bit more information, maybe have some connections with the local lord and politics in there to get their plans and motivations shot forward. Your home needs to be able to facilitate that. It needs to be a resource for the players. It can't just be something in their inventory like, I guess I have 50 feet of rope or, well, rope is somewhat useful, so that's a bad example. But let's say I have a lot of string. I also have this open wine bottle, okay? You don't want a home to be put into that same category as an open wine bottle. It's their home. The most important piece of your life is probably your home. You don't just wander as a vagrant from here to there. It's not great. It should be important to you. And for the players, it should also be important to them in their daily lives, in their lines of work. So make their home a valuable resource. It could be something as simple as even if your players are into this, a butcher shop or a warehouse because of their whatever professions or something weird. Players are weird creatures anyways, but you can make it so that it connects to them. It speaks to their line of work and their characters. So make the home a valuable resource that the players will want to keep using. Now, some do's and don'ts with a home. We already went over that when you give the players a home, you need to make them earn it and it maybe go through a little bit more effort to even make it personalized. Again, the Troll Skull Manor and Dragon Heist that turned into the Gargoyles Chalice was given through a quest that they earned and then they had to go through something else in Troll Skull Manor to make it into a bar to refurbish it so that they earn it and have some personal stakes 
into this home. That's the first thing you probably want to do. The second is to make it with filled with useful NPCs. First, probably as neighbors, and second, as useful NPCs who come to that home. You don't want it to just be a place that people go to. No, it's a home. It's lively. You have neighbors. You have other people who know that you're there. You might even have a fanatic that loves the groups. I mean, come on. If you have a level 13 group or higher, you probably have some fans. And these fans might fanatically come to you and say, I want to join you. And <laughs> then you'll have a fun, interesting opportunity there. But you, you will want to have useful and interesting NPCs around that area. And lastly, something that you will want to do is you will want to make it so that this home is able to be completely customized by your player and not a pain to do so. If you make it so that there are too many hoops to jump through, like for example, they have to talk to 17 different guilds, they have to pay them all 500 gold in order to refurbish this place, that's not gonna happen. So you need to make it so that this place is inviting and something that the players can be interested in, gain some other benefit out of, not just from NPCs, but that this place gives its own beneficial resource, whether it's a little bit of gold or just that place for people to meet you at, it needs to give something to your players. Now, a very important don't. The biggest don't that you could have is to not constantly destroy their home or constantly threaten their home. Oh, if it ever turns from a resource into a liability, that home's scrapped. Your players aren't gonna care about it, it's terrible. And uh, threatening that home once, maybe twice, during a camp pang is okay, depending on the level of the threat. If you are going to raise that home when the players aren't able to do anything about it, they're out on an adventure, they come back, their home's destroyed, they're gonna be mad. They might not even wanna make that home back again. You should threaten it while the players are in the home. And you might have a big threat that is destroying the rest of the city and have the players say, no, we're going to defend our home over everything else. But you don't want to have this consistently happen. If you do constantly, by the third, fourth, or fifth time, the players are just going to say, whatever. Some might be conflicted, but overall the group consensus will tilt as this continues to happen towards burn it to the ground. If you have some minor squabbles that could threaten your home, you still don't want it to happen too much. You still don't want too many fights to happen at the player's home. If you do, the players will have to pay for costs and it's just, it's too much of a problem. You don't want the home to be a liability. It's the biggest don't that I can say with a home is to not make it a liability. And the second, as we've already kind of gone over, is to not just destroy it without the players being able to do something. That's, that's just terrible. You attach them and ground them to this anchor in the world and then you just say, yeah, it's gone. Couldn't do anything about it. Sorry. That is, that is such a terrible move and destroys any hope of your players not becoming murder hobos because that really encourages them to take a plunge off the deep end. Even if they weren't going to before, you've highly encouraged it. So with all this, understanding why you want to have a home for your players, mainly to avoid murder hoboism, but also able to make your story more interesting, grounded, relatable, and connecting to your characters, along with what type of homes you should have and what you should do and what you should definitely not do with the players' homes. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below of what homes your players have had, why, what homes you think you're going to give your players, or why you should or should not have player homes. If you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ding that notification bell so that you can stay informed for more of these videos. I look forward to your thoughts on player homes in the comments down below. And until next time, this has been Wizzo. Keep rolling.